The law of definite proportion states that a chemical compound always contains the same elements in exactly the same proportions. To help illustrate, let's think of molecules like words and atoms are like letters. Let's look at the word together and the chemical compound C2H3O3. Now, just like words can be broken down, chemical compounds can also be broken down. So together breaks down into to get her. And the, this chemical compound breaks down to C2, H3, and O3. Now, two can break down even further, so we have the words break them down into the letters. And after the letters, you can't break down anymore. Now, the chemical compound, we're breaking that down to its letters. And after that, it can't be broken down anymore. So, letters are like atoms because according to Dalton's atomic theory, atoms can't be broken down anymore. So, the C isn't going to be able to be broken down into anything else in the same way that the T and together can't be broken down into anything else. Now, if you change or add just one letter of a word, you're going to change the whole word. For example, let's take the word plate. Okay, a plate is something that you eat off of. Now, if I were to take that T and change it into an N, I have a completely different word now. So now I have plane, something that you can fly in. Well, the same concept applies to chemical compounds. If you change or add just one element of a compound, you're going to change the whole compound. So, say I have N2O. That is the chemical formula for laughing gas. It's what they use in a dentist to put you to sleep. Now, if I were to just change one little letter and take that N and make it an H, I've now created H2O, which is water. Completely different compound from laughing gas. But not only does changing a letter make it something different, adding one can also completely make it different. So if I look at plain, if I add a T, I have a completely different word now, planet. Same thing with the chemical formula on the bottom. So now I have water, H2O. What if I added another oxygen? So that gave me H2O2 is no longer water now it's hydrogen peroxide so with these chemical formulas it's really important to understand that if you have different elements it's going to give you different compounds so as you can see a word always contains the same letters in exactly the same proportions that means if you change a letter, you get a completely different word. Same thing for chemical compounds. A chemical compound always contains the same elements in exactly the same proportions. If you change an element, you change the compound. This is the law of definite proportions. And again, to reiterate the law of definite proportions, a chemical compound always contains the same elements in exactly the same proportions. Say we took a bottle of water and we grabbed a water molecule from that bottle of water. Well, we would see that it had two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So, it has a ratio of hydrogen to oxygen of 2 to 1. Now, if we looked at the mass percent, we would find that it had 12% hydrogen by mass and 88% oxygen. So, what if we were to go somewhere else and get water from the tap? So, what if we looked at tap water? If we grab one of those water molecules, we would see that it is the same molecule, it is the same compound. 
Now, if we look at the ratio, it's two hydrogens to one oxygen, the ratio of two to one. So it has the same ratio. And if we look at the mass percents, 12% hydrogen and 88% oxygen. So the water from the faucet has the same mass percent as the water from the bottle. So that's an example of the law of definite proportions. No matter where in the world you find water, it's always going to have the same compound, the same ratio, and the same percents. Water from the Atlantic Ocean is going to be 12% hydrogen, 88% oxygen. If you go all the way to the Pacific Ocean, water is going to be 12% hydrogen, 88% oxygen. That is the law of definite proportions. 125 grams of a compound contains 110 grams of oxygen. What is the percent of oxygen in the compound? Well, let's look at our known and our unknown to solve this problem. Our total mass of the compound is 125 grams. That's what the problem gives us. Also, we know the mass of oxygen, which is 110 grams. Now, our unknown is the percent of oxygen. So, how do we find the percent of oxygen? We take the mass of oxygen, divide by the total mass, and then multiply by 100. So in this case, our mass of oxygen is 110 grams. We want to divide that by 125 grams, the total mass, multiply that by 100, and we will get our answer 88%. So this compound is 88% oxygen. So no matter where you find this compound, according to the law of definite proportions, it's going to have 88% oxygen. A chemical compound contains 10 grams of hydrogen and 40 grams of carbon. What is the percent of hydrogen in the compound and what is the percent of carbon? Let's look at our knowns and our unknown. What's known? 10 grams of hydrogen given to us in a problem. We have 40 grams of carbon that's also given to us. Now our unknown is the total. We're not given the total directly so we don't know that. We also don't know the percent of hydrogen, that's because that's what they're asking us for. We also don't know the percent of carbon. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the total, and that's easy. All we do, all we do is add our known quantities. So our total is going to be 10 grams of hydrogen plus 40 grams of carbon, giving us a total of 50 grams. So now we know our total, and we can go on and calculate the percents. The percent of hydrogen is going to be equal to the mass of hydrogen divided by the total mass times 100. So the mass of hydrogen is 10 grams. The total mass is 50 grams. 10 divided by 50 times 100 will give us 20 percent hydrogen. Now to find the percent carbon we take the mass of carbon divided by the total mass and multiply it by 100. So the mass of carbon is 40 grams, the total mass is 50 grams, 40 divided by 50 times 100 will give us 80%. So this chemical compound contains 20% hydrogen and 80% carbon. No matter where in the world you go, this compound is going to have 20% hydrogen and 80% carbon by the law of definite proportions.